Hi guys, Pete Mazaris, the uh, Home Inspector Mentor, uh, here to talk to you more about uh, building your business and focusing on process excellence. So let's say that you take a call from somebody who um, you know, says, hey man, I, I really need this house you know, I'm, uh, to be inspected really thoroughly and I need everything that's wrong with it to be identified and reported. Okay, so what's wrong with that question? First, the first thing that's wrong with it is that um, as a home inspector, you can't find everything that's wrong with the house, okay? My response to that question is, well, we can't find everything, okay? We're not that, we're not able to do that, and no one is able to do that because we are performing a non-invasive visual inspection of the accessible, permanently installed systems and components of that home. So if it's not accessible, we can't see it. If it's behind a wall, we can't see it, okay? If it's behind furniture or storage, we can't see it, okay? That's first and foremost. You guys have to know that that's what you are doing. In fact, you should memorize that statement. We are performing a non-invasive visual inspection of the accessible systems and components that are permanently installed in the home, okay? Nothing, nothing beyond that. You go beyond that, you're taking the house apart. You are breaking the standard and you're opening yourself up for liability. And that's not what you wanna do. Okay, so that's first and foremost. So you have to know what your standard that you subscribe to requires. And if you go beyond that, okay, you're taking a risk liability wise, okay? So study your standard. Know what it is. Make sure that you know when you're filling out your reports, your practice reports at this point, that you are only putting in things that are required by the standard. Anything beyond that becomes a personal choice. For instance, you know, the standards don't require us to, um, you know, estimate the uh, remaining life of, uh, of an item or the age of an item. Okay. And so I kind of disagree a little bit with that. Um, for roofs, okay? So as a home inspector, and if you're, you know, inspecting a um, asphalt shingle roof, you know, you should be able to get a good feel for that age. You should be able to estimate it within, let's say, a five-year gap. So that roof is 10 to 15 years old, 15, 20 years old. Looks like it probably has, you know, less than five years remaining, three to five, or it needs replaced, okay? You know, a competent inspector, I think, should be able to identify that. And that's what I train my guys. That's what I've done. And I've gotten very, 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 very small pushback in 20 years with, with doing that from everybody. And if you don't do that, then, you know, the, the realtor and the buyer are going to ask you about it anyway. So what are you going to say? So you need to get good at that. And um, in my opinion, even though the standards don't require that, you know, I, I like to put that in my reports and I'll put that in writing. It's an estimate anyway, estimated age, estimate remind, remaining life. Okay. I think that's important for a client. You know, there's some things that you need to take responsibility for, you know, as a home inspector, as a professional being hired to evaluate a, evaluate a home. Obviously there's things we can't do, but there's things that, you know, in our professional judgment, we should be able to say, okay, as an estimate or an opinion, okay? Uh, and these are some things beyond the objectiveness. I, I understand that, okay? But you, you as the home inspector, as the, uh, you know, uh, fiduciary uh, consultant for the client, you know, you have to have their best interest at heart, okay? Just pretend you're inspecting the house for your kids or yourself. Well, no, not yourself, because I don't know if you've ever inspected a house yourself that you were gonna buy, uh, it never turns out well because you're emotionally attached to the outcome. So you don't do a good job inspecting the house. At least that's my, you know, my opinion. So, so side bar, never inspect the house that you're going to buy. Have somebody else do it. So anyway, so let's get back to um, process excellence. Okay. When you are introducing yourself on site to, um, to your clients, to the realtors, you know, you explain you know what you're going to do you're going to tell them that you're going to keep them updated and this is their opportunity to check the house out again 
uh, on their own and not to follow you around because, you know, number one, it's unsafe for you. Number two, it's distracting for you uh, because you might miss something and we don't want that to happen because, you know, then you're not doing your job and, you know, you might miss something and that could cost money, right? And so, you know, 99 out of 100 people get this. And so, you know, the one person that doesn't get that, you know, you you can start off with them and, you know, see how it goes. Usually they get called away anyway by their wives, okay? But sometimes you get the guy who wants to learn how to be a home inspector. And so he's going to follow you around, okay? And if it's that guy, usually they're pretty cool about it, okay? They get it and they just want to watch you. Oh, well, what are you going to do, you know? walk away from, you know, the inspection because they want to follow you around and learn. And that might be a cool person to, to get to know and meet. And so, um, you know, it's going to happen. So big deal. Otherwise, tell them not to follow you around. And then you go do your job. And this point is very important. And I want you guys to think about it. And this point is how do you get efficient at collecting the data that you're observing during the home inspection so that you're not spending four hours on a house that should take any professional experienced home inspector two hours to inspect okay all right to me the answer to that is you collect your data with your camera and a voice recorder and then you populate the report on your device or on your computer after the inspection. That's what I did. And that's what I would still do if I'm still in the field because I'm just not going to be the guy who's going to, you know, tap through the laptop or the, um, the cell phone looking for a call out and that slows me down. It, it's just something that I, I don't, I don't think, you know, a new inspector can really get good at. And, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're in a house that has a lot of defects, you know, you're going to, you know, half your time, you're punching something into your phone or into your tablet, you know, and, you know, and I think that starts to get distracting or you know that you're going too slow and then that's going to cause you to want to speed up and then you're going to miss something. So, so while you guys are practicing, you know, here's a technique that you may want to um, practice, okay? And that is only record the data on the house via your camera, okay? So all your pictures of the roof, all your defects of the roof, okay, are going to be the only thing that you are collecting when you do the inspection. So try your own house, okay? Even if you've already inspected your own house, do it again. And go through your house and just record with your camera. Ages of furnaces and ACs. Take a picture of the, um, you know, of the, of the serial number, okay? Um, I think pretty much most things that are required to be described by the standards and um, what you feel should be in an inspection per the standard uh, can, be, can be recorded with your camera. So then when you're done with the inspection, okay, then sit down and put the report together from the pictures, okay? That's how I did it. Now, granted, when, when I was first doing it, I included a voice recorder, a digital handheld voice recorder, and that was my backup. So when I said, when I thought that the, the roof was 10 to 15 years, I recorded that the roof was 10 to 15 years, okay? I got used to recording everything that was in, um, was a defect or I re was required to be described in the report. So that went to the voice recorder because that was my quality control backup. That allowed me to do uh, most inspections in two hours or less. Okay, inspections that went up to three hours, I got paid several hundred dollars to do that. 
but I was quick, I was efficient, I was thorough, I didn't miss anything, okay? Um, for the most part, of course, no one's perfect. And, um, you know, I was able to compile the report later on my time. So that, that showed great customer service, okay? To the realtor and um, still to the client because of what I was able to do and accomplish and produce, um, you know, during that inspection for.